Hi, it's Bradford Ferguson here with Rebellionaire.com, and today we're going to talk about the Model X and S price cuts, talk about Tesla awareness, awareness among Tesla owners, among uh, the, the public, and about Tesla advertising. And joining us today is Yashu Sharma with Hit That Bid. Uh, Yashu is a internet uh, marketing guru. Uh, he's pretty scrappy. Curious what he thinks Tesla could or should be doing. We have Kaz with Cyberlift. Uh, does a lot of great videos on YouTube where he'll take people for a ride, uh, Uber rides, and maybe it's also Lyft. Uh, educate yeah, people on Tesla, have a conversation, like have it have the FSD beta do the drive, and then you know see how they react to that. And uh, Nick uh, also does uh, Uber rides uh, for people in Tesla. Yashu, I know we. Tesla start off with some like keyword purchasing out in Europe. Uh, I'm curious what you think about that tactic that they're doing. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, thanks for having us on. Um, I, I think just so people know about the context, what you're talking about is Tesla mm -hmm. actually starting to advertise for the first mm -hmm. time. Uh, and so that's actually been publicly verified with Google and their ad tools that we can use as advertisers to see. And so Tesla Inc has started to advertise, I think sometime, uh, probably two and a half months ago ish. And it was a mix between the UK and United States. And a lot of it was solar based and the majority of the ads were mm. Google search ads. And so I'm not going to say it's advertising. Cause I think when I say that a lot of people kind of get triggered and they go, yeah, that's not an ad, you know, an ad is, you know, something on CNBC playing at halftime <laughs> during a football show. Like, you know, that's what people think are ads in 2023, the new age of, of media and advertising. It's not so typically just video ads. Now there's a million different ways that you can get served ads and, and, and placements. And so from my uh, understanding it looks like Tesla is really trying to hit bottom of funnel traffic, meaning if someone's mm -hmm. coming in, searching for Tesla Model X, uh, searching for Tesla Solar, to be able to get those brand clicks based on Google search. I think there's a couple of big um, uh, benefits of that. Number one being that Tesla can make sure that competitors aren't brand stealing their intent. So yeah. if I'm Rivian and I'm coming in, why wouldn't I bet for, or why wouldn't I bid for Tesla Model X? Um, or, you know, let's say Tesla Model S, probably a little bit better of a comparison, right, uh, for the Cybertruck or something, and be able to steal the traffic that's coming for those keywords and send them back to mine. And so I think the first step in any sort of advertising funnel is, is more on the defensive, especially if you have a multi-billion market company. So I think that's number one. I think they've done that. They've expanded a little bit more to do a little bit higher up the funnel with more just solar-based keywords. But it's interesting that Tesla still not yet experimented with uh, with video advertising as of yet. Mm -hmm. Yashu, I'm I'm a little nervous, of, and we'll come back to the the awareness piece here. I'm a little nervous about Tesla defending keywords against uh, Rivian and Lucid because they're willing to just blow a bunch of money making cars. Like, let's lose a hundred percent. Let's lose a hundred, two hundred percent on making our cars. That that seems a little risky. What do you think about that? Uh, I think what's more riskier is letting them bid for your keywords and letting them take people off uh, that are looking for the Model X or S or whatever. I think if, if it's the average person, like like the average Tesla enthusiast like us sitting in this room, mm -hmm. we, we'll, we'll probably skip over those ads and we'll go, how oh, that's kind of funny. But if it's <laughs> someone that's kind of more, more so a layman, doesn't really care about Tesla, but heard about the Model S, well, they mm -hmm. probably will check out the Lucid if they see it in that. So I think there's a degree of cannibalization that does happen. And to attribute uh, ROI on those ads is a little bit difficult sometimes. But I think the defensive technique, it's not going to cost them billions of dollars. Like we're talking millions here to, to defend that. And I think there's a degree of just brand reputation to be able to, to just bid for those keywords. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Kaz, what's been your experience generally when you're, Talking with people about Tesla, um, you know, curious where you think the public is with you know awareness around Tesla. Uh, it's lacking, to put it simply. Um, even now, I've been doing this since 2019, driving people around in Teslas, and I'd say the majority of the the narrative, or I, I should say the the colloquial understanding of what Tesla EVs are, has not really changed much. I mean, 
the amount of people that don't know that chargers are everywhere or assume that my model three is a hundred thousand dollar car or that the battery is going to go out at some point i mean it's a lot of really remedial base level knowledge that you would expect people to have in 2023 mm -hmm. it's it could be kind of shocking and uh, i i brought nick here uh, he helped me out with the mega pack count um, maybe we'll talk a little bit about mega pack at the end but um Nick had a story that really shocked me. He he took a Tesla owner for a ride. I, th I think they were, you were doing the beta for them. And um, it was a pretty shocking story where they actually owned the FSD beta and didn't realize they had it or something like that. Yeah. So I'm trying to remember that person specifically. I, 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 this guy was visiting Portland. I live in Portland. Um, and he's from Southern California. Um, he owns two Teslas, a, a 2020 and a 2022. And it was unclear to me whether he, I think he was like misinformed in his mind when, when he bought the vehicle. And uh, my brother-in-law recently bought a Tesla too. And I, I, when I talked to him about FSD, he wasn't sure what he had and didn't have. And I think that, mm -hmm was with this guy as well anyways um he thought he had purchased it but that he couldn't use it because it's illegal in california to to use the software oh, and i was explaining wow. to him that you know i i'm very much in this space online and i watch tons of videos and i know people um youtube and twitter that live in california and they're filming this and there's there's and I was like you might be confused by there was you know uh some issues ver uh on the verbiage that Tesla used and and that's probably what you're getting at that you can't use it and I was like if you go on your app um you should be able to see if you can upgrade um anyways suffice it to say uh he was very impressed with the ride and um, I think we took him, I took him from the airport to wherever he was staying. It was like a 30 minute trip. No, I don't think there was any interventions, definitely no, uh, maybe interventions, but no disengagements. And he, uh, he's like, I need to have this. And he looked on the app and I can't remember. I think he realized that he didn't have it. Um, and, uh, I'm fairly certain he was going to pull the trigger after this. Mm -hmm trip but it, it was just a weird situation and, I, and i've had that experience like countless times like with uh you know it's tesla one thing, yeah it's one thing tesla that non-tesla owners are confused about the product but te there's mm -hmm. tesla owners that are confused about the product that's weird yeah and, and around that time i heard a story of someone who is in Al alberta canada and they were talking with an owner a tesla owner who never went to Banff because they didn't think they could charge your Tesla. Like they didn't know about the supercharger network at all. Yeah. But like yeah. somehow they got so excited about Tesla and got a Tesla, got the usual delivery thing with Tesla where when you take delivery, they don't like make sure they explain about uh, superchargers. They don't make sure they explain about like the emergency latch on the door you know, how to get out of your Tesla if you need to, um, you know, things like that where um, they should make sure to uh, inform, you know, first time Tesla owners for sure on that. Um, there's just a lot of work that can be done. Uh, Kaz, I'm curious, like your craziest story that you can recall on the spot as far as um, you know, a lack of awareness around Tesla and I, I totally understand that, like, why people thought it was mm -hmm. illegal because, you know, the people in the media saying, oh, you're testing on public roads and all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have uh, – maybe I'm just not recalling anything that was saying it was crazy to us. Mm -hmm. uh, I think more so it's just the, the common knowledge is – <clears throat> to most people that, you know, charging our cars is a major inconvenience because it takes hours and hours. And the face is probably the best part when I'm like, no, I'm, I'm filled up in 20 minutes or so. And they just, it's like, they can't process. They're like, no, that, no, what? And then I'll also show, cause their next question is, well, how far can you go? And I just hit the little, 
little lightning button on our screen. Boom, shows all the charters across the United States and then brain blows up a second time. <laughs> um, I mean, I have literally done 10,000 trips between Uber and Lyft and this is a regular occurrence. And this is just me. Uh, yeah, about 6,000 on Lyft and about 4,000 on Uber. Wow. And the majority wow. of people are, well, if I'm being completely realistic, the majority of people have their headphones in and don't talk and don't care. Mm-hmm. But of the people who converse, the majority of them have no idea. And after with me, I've had plenty of people who are like, oh, man, I'm going to go check these out. I'm going to go buy these. Or they ask about other EVs. And the conversation evolves. It's not really hard to break the ice, though. It's especially when they hear that it was 40 grand when I got my Model 3 or something. The reactions on FSD, uh, they can range from, oh, that's cool, I guess, to mind blown, insane. I can't believe this is real life. Mm. It really depends on the person. Yeah. But yeah, a range of emotions and a lot of surprise and things that I never get tired of talking about because I'm just the Tesla geek that's just everyone comes in. I'm like, yeah, if you start asking questions, I'm going to teach you all of it. Uh, but it's it hasn't really changed aside from and maybe Nick can confirm this more people are starting to know how to get in my car which is nice they seem to kind of know to push on the back of the model 3 handle to open it but for the first two years they just kind of stood there and looked at it like I don't understand what's happening (laughs) yeah there's there's a lot of model 3 and why uber lyft drivers I mean in Portland, for sure. I'm sure it's, it makes sense anywhere in the country, but in Portland, there's a lot of EVs. But um, yeah, frequent flyer Uber riders definitely know how to get into the car. Um, you can tell if they're an expert level Uber rider if they get in really confidently. Yes. Um, and then there's another tier that uh, use it often, but less frequently. And, and they, they're they awkward with the handle, but they, they know how to do it. Um, and then there's the people that just stare at it. No idea. Makes me miss the Model S. That made it so easy. Just popped out and said, hey, come on in. <laughs> so uh, I'm guessing a lot of the questions are around charging. But whenever I would give a beta ride to a client or a friend, the, the question I always hated to answer, and I had a Model Y, and this is when Model Y was in a, a shortage. It's like, how much does it cost? Mm. And I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> 62,000 or whatever it was. Um, or yeah, how much does this one cost? Because I had a Model Y performance. Um, and I, I think another thing people don't understand is the safety. I was, I was yes. just at a, uh, a funeral recently, and uh, the guy that parked me to get me in the right spot for the procession after the services, um, he, he said uh, something like, well, um, you wonder about them batteries. And mm-hmm. I said, what do you mean? He's like, <laughs> they're catching fire. And yeah. so, you know, p- because the media highlights every Tesla fire, uh, they think that Teslas are more likely to catch fire, which actually is the opposite of the truth. They're yeah. uh, nine, time, nine to 10 times less likely uh, to catch fire. Um, Curious, Yashu, if if Tesla did more advertising, or or curious what you saw in their the testing they did with you know mostly solar, do you think they should you know focus on price and safety, or do you think it should be the supercharger network? What what would be like the top things you would focus on? Hmm, I think if they did a video campaign and video ads on YouTube, I think just talking about the lifestyle that you live once you get a Tesla a little bit would, would go a long way. I think the charging, at-home charging, supercharging, safety is a big one. Um, price is all, obviously, I, I think at the end of the day, like money really does talk because when people are in the car market, even though they're looking for maybe a gas car and they don't like a Tesla or EV, if it's within their budget, they'll at least take a decent glance at a Tesla and they'll be like, well, it kind of fits it. Maybe I'll just check it out. And I think the biggest thing with, with Tesla's is you have to sit in one to get it. I know it's it's very theoretical, and that's what really changed it for me was sitting in a Tesla. And, and then there's the group of, I think, Tesla fans that are like, well, why do you need to advertise? Like, all of this is obvious. Um, well, all of this is good for referral. Like, this is what the Tesla salespeople should be doing. And I think it's important to remember that advertising is just a way for us to, <laughs> it's going to sound bad, but but force a message on someone. 
like make the make them aware of something that you can pay that uh, you pay a lump sum amount of money and you can essentially bring your message across whether they like it or not. Um, and I think advertising is is um, with a video campaign on YouTube would probably go quite uh, a ways. Now, Tesla kind of did this, though, if we think about it, right? With all the paid sponsorship for, for the Model 3 Highland, I guess you could make the argument that Tesla essentially did paid advertising there by giving the Model 3 Highland tour to creators to make videos for the launch. That's essentially an ad. I mean, you could probably clip that up, make a couple of shorts from it, run that on YouTube, force. But again, the, the, the key point of differentiation here is that advertising serves a message to people that are not looking necessarily for your message. The Highland, great, awesome videos. But let's let's face it, like people like us are already into Tesla. That's why we're watching those videos. Yeah. We want to show it. To, we want to show it to that that maybe that grandma or that uncle that hates EVs and think there's just golf carts. Those are the people that we want to reach. And and Tesla has has really no shortage of marketing material that they could advertise. Um, so when and if they choose to do it. it, it I think it'd be great. And with a video campaign on YouTube, you could target that to zip codes still, right? So like you yeah. can give it a list of the best zip codes in America as far as where that income is available or those assets are. Um, you can measure it. So, you know, this is why I think Tesla should uh, continue to experiment with internet uh, marketing or advertising is it, it's highly measurable. Um, what do you think about some kind of uh, thing where they retarget people who visit the Tesla website? Yeah, I think doing a bottom of funnel strategy where you get to essentially retarget people that didn't check out. So maybe they clicked on, yeah, add this to my cart, or they went through the first part of the info, or maybe they didn't get their deposit in yet. Uh, retargeting those people is very easy to do. I'm sure Tesla is doing it already with their retargeting list search ads. Their, uh, their, their car uh most call them R uh, RLSAs, um, but I think retargeting is great, but with search, it's just a little bit more difficult. I think when they open up new formats, namely video, I think that's when we'll start to see kind of a shift in people talking about advertising and whether it's working or not. And again, I think advertising is a, is a long-term strategy. I don't think it has to cost very much. It doesn't have to cost them the billions of dollars. Although I know that a lot of legacy autos do spend that much money. It, it can be very hyper-focused and very lean, mean. It doesn't have to be a big fat machine. And the cost is what you bring up is what triggered me recently. They dropped the price of the Model S and X by 20000 And essentially they sell... Uh, 20,000 of those each quarter. So that's $400 million a quarter, uh, 1.6 billion. I know there's different effects uh, from it. You know, maybe they sell more, maybe they get economies of scale, but let's say it costs them only a only billion dollars. You know, what's wrong with a million dollar test? Um, you, you mentioned all the collateral or all the stuff that uh, Tesla's already developed. So they are doing marketing. Uh, they are doing a PR, so to speak, on Twitter uh, with their their Twitter account. Um, they have the impact report that addresses a lot of the FUD. It, it talks about the cost, the cost to own. It talks about safety. Um, what do you think about a mailer to go out to, you know, those same zip codes? Um, you know, maybe you don't make it out. Maybe you make out of something sustainable like hemp or bamboo. So you're not, you know, chopping down trees to do the mailer. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on that kind of advertising, Yashu? I think doing snail mail is just a little bit tough to measure um, direct ROI. And that's the problem with it. Attribution is the problem with, with, with physical uh, advertising. You just don't know. I think there's so much Tesla can do just with online ads. I mean, the majority of people today have either bought something online or the majority of their shopping they do is online. Um, cars especially are, are not there, but t for Tesla, it's crazy how fast they've made it to buy a car. When, when, when I bought my Model 3, it took me all of 90 seconds to buy this car. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually kind of crazy. So yeah. I, think it'll probably, I think you'll actually get a lot of impulse buys, believe it or not. I really think you will. Uh, there's people that have a lot of money out there that don't care. And, you know, every now and then you just have to catch them in the right mood and they'll buy it. And as soon as they 
as soon as they try the Tesla, they, they'll end up keeping it. So I think there's this misnomer out there that that cars are a long sales cycle and they have to be long. Um, I know people that I've talked, actually, a matter of fact, two weeks ago, I was I was speaking with someone who wanted to get into an EV, had some questions about their about the Model Y. They have a gas car today, but they had they didn't know how charging would work. Their 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 buddy had a Ford F one fifty Lightning and was driving around four hours trying to find this charger <laughs> on the highway, couldn't get in. And so I cleared some stuff up with him. He calls me and he says, "I'm going to buy this Model Y uh, this week." So I think um, impulse buys can can especially happen. But to answer your question, the physical mail, I would say no. Let's focus on digital. It's more it's it the attribution is there. There, it's easier to scale this thing. Physical only goes so far now. And it's really good for like real estate as well because it's hyper geo focused for that area. But I don't, th- I don't think there's a reason why Tesla needs to needs to focus on physical. And I'm gonna go to Kaz here in a second, especially about the referral code. Yeah, I think it's a mistake that Tesla used to sell like every car from their 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 showroom floor with the you know the the small Tesla centers with you know, one Tesla there and they would sell them all or they would sell all the demo cars. I, I think you should always have the demo cars so you can be giving rides to people so people can have that experience, get that butts and seats experience and, and give them a chance for their you know minds to be changed. Uh, you know, maybe people don't calm down with the car and learn how truly amazing it is to drive in, in, in just one drive, uh, but they can at least get a feel for that instant acceleration uh curious Kaz, like what's been your experience uh, i'm guessing you have a something you scan um or people can scan that you hand out to people as far with your referral code i actually don't uh for a specific personal reason that i can't edit the damn thing and i don't want to pass out what's on my referral code <laughs> oh, okay um if uh sorry i language my bad i didn't think but uh, if if Tesla would give us like a, a penny penny two x on on X, but up a great point. If we could just you know edit one time, customize it, man, I would have that scannable and passed out everywhere. And I do encourage people to do that if they're able to, especially Uber and Lyft drivers. It makes it really easy. I've got the QR code to my YouTube channel right on the center console that people can easily access, and it'd be awesome to have a QR code for the referral code, maybe printed out and put right there as well. Uh, perhaps I'll explore that avenue. But I did want to say that I think to Yashu's point there'd be a competitive edge in getting customers if they realized how simple the buying process really is. And they're not just dreading a full day at the dealership, oh. you know, and actually saw like, Oh my gosh, this is more like going to Apple minus the two hour line to get into the store. There's a lot of avenues that can make this really sped up, expedited, simple software focused going in with the, the whole image that is Tesla. Yeah, my, the last uh, ICE car I bought was an Acura MDX. I went to the dealer. I literally had, I think, 45 minutes to be done. And I told the guy, you know, because we had to pick up our girls from from uh, practice or something or a daycare. And, uh, like, literally, uh, you know, he would not let me finish the purchase in, in that amount of time. Uh, curious, Nick, you know, what kind of experience you have with the referral code or anything else you want to comment on? Yeah. So I've had thoughts uh, for the referral code in the future of, of um, having something that, you know, uh, people can scan back there. I've been hesitant thus far. Like, so there's been a few occasions where I've had long, really good conversations with writers and really informing them. Um, answering their questions and at the end of it based off what they have said uh, and how they acted it sounded like there was a high uh, likelihood that they were going to make their next purchase was be a Tesla um, and in those moments you know that there's a part of my brain is like oh we'll use my um, <laughs> referral link but I didn't want to come off like I was selling uh, Tesla or, or gaining yeah. anything from them purchasing Mm -hmm. um it takes a little bit of credibility away i think um and i I just really want to educate people is is the main goal um but i mean i'm still if if i continue to uber and if i do it a lot more you know i 
that's subject to change, but uh, that's where my head is at has been at recently, anyways. So I'm pretty excited about Cybertruck. I, I feel like Cybertruck is the ultimate advertisement, but it doesn't ha- it doesn't have uh, the Tesla logo on it. Doesn't have the Tesla name. Probably a good chunk of people will figure it out. But I, I was just at a family gathering with a infectious disease doctor. He didn't. He never seen a cyber truck before. Hmm. Did, didn't know what it was. If he saw it on the road, he probably would think it was something someone custom made. Uh, curious. <laughs> do you think cyber truck will lead to a huge influx of awareness for Tesla? You want to take that I, first? Go uh, ahead. I don't- if you want to yeah. go first, I mean, I absolutely think so. I mean, how quickly, even with their low volume, we've seen Rivian take over California in a big way on the truck space. I'm seeing R1Ss and R1Ts everywhere. We're going to see even more cyber trucks because we know how Tesla scales. And just the sheer number, people are either going to think that we're under some sort of alien invasion or Terminators happening. <laughs> Something is going to trigger in their minds to go, what is that thing? It's not going to be a one-off like when you might see a a DeLorean and you go, oh, man, hey, that's really cool. I know what that is. No, you're going to see fleets of Cybertrucks everywhere and go, what is happening? What what is this? It's not going to be a little one-off Halo car. Um, I don't – because of that, I don't think it's going to take a whole lot. Tesla's demonstrated a lot of sales by word of mouth with what they've done, and there definitely are plenty of arguments, and I agree in a large way that advertising can help because – the amount of people that just don't understand, like the educational ads would go a long way. I, I don't think Cybertruck will need any help, though, sparking that curiosity. Now, Tesla could strategically do something to direct that curiosity toward them. But I don't know that you would have to put something on the Cybertruck, if that's what you're hinting at. I think one thing owners clubs could do would be to do some Cybertruck parades, like once they get enough yes. uh, Cybertrucks in the owners club. <laughs> have a parade and you know have it go around an event or whatever uh go around Put lightnings and cyber trucks against each other and tow offs <laughs> and start having all kinds of fun there won't be enough lightning so right true yeah yashu what are your thoughts on this i i get really excited thinking of the cyber truck because i think it opens up a whole new pool of demographic for tesla that person that i think about often in my head that persona of like it's usually kind of like my uncle to be quite honest hates EVs, very gas loving, very loyal to GM, Ford, mostly GM, um, you know, and, and that person that doesn't see a use case today, because they might be a plumber, electrician, roofer, g- general contractor type. I think the Cybertruck unlocks a whole pool of utility for that person where if for their business decision, if they're being intellectually honest, they have to look into the Cybertruck for their next vehicle. Now, I think their buddies will often show them anyways, because they all usually work together in pools or employees or, you know, big fleet operators will, or, or, or big um, uh, trade companies will usually probably adopt these to, to, to begin with in fleets. But I, I'm, I'm just really excited for the Cybertruck, not only because of everything you guys mentioned, but the type of person that it'll introduce Tesla to. Bring in the whole Midwest, all the truck guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with everything you guys have said, and I, I think um, the Cybertruck is going to be one of those products that lifts all boats. Like it's going to bring people yeah. in, and they're going to see the other products, they're going to go to the website, and they're gonna be like, you know, the Cybertruck brought me in, but you know what, the three is best for me. Um, but I do want to like add to something like what Bradford said, mentioning the the infectious disease doctor. I think you said um, every, and this is a very small anecdote, probably just a dozen anecdotes. Um, Every rider that I have had that has asked me about the Ford Lightning or uh, one of Rivian's products, I mentioned the Cybertruck to them, and they've never seen it, which yeah. blows my mind that they know about <laughs> Ford Lightning, but they don't know about the Cybertruck. And so, so that's my automatic response when they when they bring up uh, uh, another product is I bring up the Cybertruck, and so far no one no one has known about it but i've also brought it up in other contexts too like because i i have one on order so um they if that comes up future vehicle for me or whatever i bring up the cyber truck and 100 percent of the time that is also brought that um they don't know what i'm talking about and i have them google search it while they're in the car with me and their mind is blown uh, but it's so weird you know that we get stuck in our YouTube and Twitter X bubbles 
um, thinking, how is it possible that no one knows about the Cybertruck? Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and people don't. So, um, but I do agree, like once it's on the road, it's going to have the same effect that Teslas have always had, um, but to an even larger degree since it's because it's so unique. Um, so uh, Yashu needs to hop soon. I, I, I do. Uh, I am curious about email marketing, uh, if Tesla should do a little more to that, to like current Tesla owners. Seems like they're overly cautious, uh, you know, trying not to burn people out on emails. Uh, real quick, yes or no, do you think Tesla should do more of that? Oh, 100%. They have so many. Uh, first thing, I think Tesla Especially should do. Especially on insurance too, right? Insurance, solar. But I think what Tesla should do is have a, more of a give me solution. So right now, the only way Tesla collects emails is if you place an order with, with a non-refundable deposit. I think Tesla should put together some sort of report or some sort of uh, video assets or something in exchange for people's emails. And I think they should build up their database that way to build up into a sales launch. Right now, it's only exclusively people that have placed orders um, successfully or not for Tesla's that they'll even have your email. So I think Tesla and Tesla, and I think typically this is very common in internet marketing. You'll have some sort of a lead that you'll lead with and collect emails mm -hmm. for. I think Tesla should do this and they, they're the only auto manufacturer that can even do this because they're so centralized and uh, but just D to C everything. Um, so I, I think, I don't know what asset they would have to give away in exchange for email, but it, it could be something like, uh, it could even be like free super trucking credits or something or, or I, I don't know, but I think it, sh it should be something. And that way they could email market 10 times more. Cause I'll tell you, I don't get enough emails from Tesla, even as an owner, they'll email me maybe once every blue moon with, some sort of referral yeah. update, but really, I, I never get hit up with anything, which I guess is good, but I don't know. Yeah. I feel like it's we should gamify things, me. like make it fun, like give us, I don't know, rewards, tiers, whatever. That's my gamer side thinking, but Uber and Lyft does this with your platinum diamonds type rides, different incentives that come with that. If they could find a way to, for owners to gamify this, give us prizes like supercharging or whatever. I don't know. I mean, maybe something in that vein since Elon loves gaming. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so some people may worry if you advertise, it'll increase demand and then you go back to wait lists. Uh, you know, Tesla, you know, if they do this, they should be monitoring it very closely. If they start to get, you know, huge surge in demand, they can raise price and, and begin to manage, you know, their wait list that way. And that would help uh, that would help the mission. Like people say, well, you know, lower price that helps the mission, but you know, it's a billion dollars that they kind of, you know, gave up with S and X and maybe they had to, but yeah, I, I wonder if they need to. And I just want Tesla to be able to make a first principles decision um, so they can make an informed choice. Uh, so to have the information they need, uh, experiment a little bit. I agree with Elon. You don't want ads as a crutch. Uh, so you want to be measuring things. Um, and yeah, we, we don't want it to be a dogma choice by Elon. So I, I want them to have information to make a good choice and also don't want it as a, as a crutch either. Uh, before you go, uh, Yashu, um, Curious your thoughts on that, and and um, also, could you tell us a little more about what you do uh, for for business and who who makes an ideal client for you? <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, so I, I I'm a marketing media manager, so I, I spend a lot of money online to essentially promote companies. Um, I worked in the real estate space, uh, developer side now, um, but. I don't know if, if, if anyone out there wants to talk marketing, here, here, like my weird thing is whenever I start talking about marketing, advertising, I just go on tangents. I can continue to talk for hours. So, <laughs> you know, I really, I'll, I'll spare everyone with that. If anyone wants to talk marketing at any time, let me know, come on, on, on a live stream on my channel and ask about advertising. We'll have great discussions on there. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you putting this kind of dialogue together because I think one thing that is missing is everyone just agrees often with what Elon has to say as a strategy. And often mm. that is right. Let's be honest. He 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 has more insight than all of us. He right. he has been proven right time and time again. 
But I think to disagree with Elon doesn't mean that you're saying you're smarter than him. It's saying that I might have a different point of view and perhaps we should look at it. And Elon even said as much during the investor meeting. He said, you know what? I said, I always said that I, I want to be less wrong. You guys are pushing me towards this. Why don't let's try some advertising. So I think mm -hmm. that humble attitude is the best thing that we can have. So that's why I appreciate dialogues like this bringing in, because a lot of people don't want to have this dialogue that Tesla should do anything different than they are today. Um, but boots on the ground, you heard it here from Kaz, you heard it here from Nick, like boots on the ground, people don't know. And you can't blame them for not knowing if you're not going to teach them. So um, yeah, I really appreciate you putting this together. Awesome. If, if you need to hop right now, that's totally cool. I, I want to get to Kaz and Nick. Um, right really appreciate you, Yashu. Um, Kaz, tell me a little bit more about uh, you. you. You do the Uber and Lyft driving. Is that uh, mainly all you focus on or what else do you do? Uh, well, it was for about two and a half years from 2019 until uh, about mid 21 to late 21. I, I ended up getting hired by Archimoto to be a, a service technician for them. So I am driving around constantly, you know, serving, thing, blah, sorry, servicing those vehicles similar to mm -hmm. uh, like Tesla mobile service. So that is the my main career focus now, but I drive as much as I can with Uber and Lyft to, oh, for one, you know, bring in some extra cheddar, but two, to have content for the channel and to be able to measure and see how FSD is performing over time. Even though everybody's definitely and understandably fixated on version 12, I'm still collecting all the data I can on 11.4.7 and whatever builds we get in between here and there. Uh, but it's a mixture of just driving people around, talking about Tesla, showing them self-driving techs a lot closer than they think and nowhere near as uh, dangerous as they've been led to believe in some cases, as well as dismissing or diminishing a lot of the FUD out there regarding mm -hmm. EVs in general, but definitely on the Tesla front, to your point, bringing up anytime there's Tesla in the headlines, it's never really a good thing. Um, I like to bring up the story on the safety front about the Model Y, I believe, that went over the 300-foot cliff and everyone survived. You know, yeah, little yeah. things that people just can't believe and um, that's that's most of my time split up between two different ev companies i guess you could say and all the time it takes to edit videos and get those up <laughs> yeah what an amazing story that was in i believe is in california on the pacific Devil coast slide, i think yeah on the pacific coast highway and um the uh the driver was intentionally trying to uh kill his whole family and uh, himself, uh, you know, driving over the edge, uh, allegedly. Um, and the Tesla didn't let them him do that. I said, not today. <laughs> That's remarkable. Yeah, it's pretty I can't believe more people don't know about that. There are some that have heard whispers and uh, they don't realize that it was a Tesla or that everyone did survive or especially the guy's alleged homicidal tendencies uh crazy crazy story. yeah yep nick tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, i think on twitter you're at cash money lemon right i think so at at cash at cash money lemon that sounds right um <laughs> nick lemonade <laughs> i don't even know um uh yeah compared to Kaz, i'm, I'm a lazy bum um in 2021 i thought i had enough tesla shares to like retire from nursing which is my you know former profession um got a little burnt out of that um that lifestyle uh and after 2022 i really needed to start working again um and so at the beginning of this year is when i started doing ubers um and just i've, I've really just been dipping my toe into it i needed to, to really start grinding it uh it's been it's kind of been a struggle for me um, trying to figure out like what do I need to be doing with like my life <laughs> um, right now. I've uh, maybe it's like a midlife crisis or something. But um, for the past couple of years, I've been religiously just reading um, books on investing, uh, mm -hmm. studying famous investors, reading about companies and studying companies, and trying to learn. Um, and then, you know, better myself mentally and physically. Um, but uh, I am trying to Uber more. I just did the FSD transfer, so I lost. Um, not only did I, did I uh, 
lose beta just got it back actually um mm. but i also am waiting on my vehicle to be registered and i can't uber until it's until it's registered so i'm, I'm yeah. i've been out for a few weeks and i i might be out for another few few more weeks too so pretty bummed by that I, i'm curious the two of you when when you talk to people about tesla do do people seem to be more responsive to the safety or the the savings of it or maybe it's the convenience of the charging it's kind of like an iphone where uh every night you you wake up to a full charge you you don't have to think about it um like if you if you had to take your iphone somewhere if you had to drive somewhere and you know spend 10 minutes charging your iphone uh and and then you know 10 minutes back to where you wanted to be I, I don't think people would own iPhones, but that's what we're doing with our gas cars. Um, curious what you think is most attractive to people when you're talking with them about Tesla. Well, it really depends on the customer. Um, it's a sort of an even split, I think, between the charging convenience once they discover that it actually isn't as bad as their nightmares, as well as the the fact that it really is almost no maintenance. Um, I'll get a lot of people that are asking, so what is the actual maintenance on this thing? Because a lot of people are pretty commonly aware of like, oh yeah, electric car, no gas. But they don't know that also means no oil changes, no spark plugs to worry about, no transmission fluid, no power steering fluid, you know, all the things that you can, you're can you concerned with in your, in your gas car are essentially gone. I mean, my car just crossed 150,000 miles and my brake pads are still at like their full thickness. And when people hear that it, it's again wow. back to not being able to comprehend it they're like are you mm -hmm. serious <laughs> it depends a lot on your regen habits which i'll go in you know more depth as you know how regen works and everything else but charging is probably the biggest thing and especially because uh in, in california i can speak to the fact that a lot of the people i drive around are like me we have a model three and a y but we can't charge it here at home we're, we're street parked and there are mm -hmm. so many apartments and condos and such where the people are scared not because there aren't enough chargers but because they can't just charge at home or in the parking garage like where am i going to go and then they find out you know five minutes down the road 20 minutes of your time and then they're alleviated again but there's there's a barrier and it's at there. the grocery store often yeah like, so yeah that is while well. you're doing your groceries and some people's uh like workplaces that are putting in chargers there's a lot of information that isn't known and there's a big uncomfortableness that takes range anxiety beyond will i have enough to get to my destination it's more so like, all right, what's my area pockmarked like? I have a buddy of mine who just got a new football coaching job in Florida, and he was thinking about getting a Tesla, but he's like, there's no chargers in between my route. And I was like, I doubt that's true, you know, the panhandle of Florida. So I got on mine and zoomed in, and I showed him three superchargers right in the middle of his route. Mm -hmm. Completely had him thinking <laughs> of a different story. He's like, what? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's getting more and more fleshed out every year. Um, honestly, I think of the things you mentioned, safety is not mentioned enough. The fact that these things are as safe as they are is almost like an afterthought when it should be the forethought and mm -hmm. everything else is icing on the cake. Uh, that would yeah. be my focus. Yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah, 98% of your driving is going to be, you know, from your home uh, and you're going to come back home. It's not a big deal. And maybe 2% yeah. of your driving is long trips for, for most people. Um, uh, Nick, I want to come back to, to you. You talked about learning, uh, that's something I've been focused on, you know, learning from this whole Tesla experience and learning from great investors, that kind of thing. Uh, it, uh very thankful you helped me out with the mega pack count, uh, when, when I did that back in March. And one reason why I think there's some low hanging fruit with advertising with Tesla is on that reveal video that I did right before the grand reveal, I spent 40 seconds. I talked about rebellionaire.com. And right after that, we got you know, 20 inquiries of people that want to talk with me. I had to spread it out over the course of several weeks. Um, so like, I, I think Tesla is one of those brands where they built up a lot of goodwill. And I think advertising would be very effective for them. Uh, we'll see what happens, see what they do. Are you CyberLift on Twitter, Kaz, at CyberLift? Yes. Yeah, okay. I am CyberLift on uh, Twitter, slash X, as well as YouTube. 
pretty much all my spaces around Tesla. Fortunately, nobody's thought to put those letters together. So yeah, nice and simple. I goofed that. It's yeah, it's X now. I'm try I get my AI needs to be rewritten. Twitter slash X. Uh, people saying all sorts of things. <laughs> all right. Well, great for you all to join us. Um, it, catch Kaz on YouTube. I think it's great that you're uh, working for Archimoto. I hope they pull through. Um, yeah, and I think too. it's great the work the two of you do to educate people and, and make them more aware of the, the real story behind Tesla. Um, and another life, if I wasn't as busy with Rebellion Air, I, I would uh, probably have like a black Model X with a, a black interior. And I would, um, you know, run that like Uber Black or whatever, you know, the, the premium and, and try to bend people's minds a bit on. The second um, you open those doors for them, <laughs> everyone's going to be awestruck. That would be like the ultimate. I told Emmett Peppers, that's the ultimate rideshare vehicle. Just that's hitting it. the buttons, let everyone in, done. <laughs> Uber driver fantasy for a, a Tesla Uber person because that's such an oh, yeah. ordeal to get people in and out of. Even getting out, getting out is... <laughs> Just do it all yourself. Don't worry about it, guys. Every door, I got you. <laughs> the Model X is the best. But uh, thank you too, Brad, for, for hosting and then also for educating people too. I mean, you do a hell of a job of that um, on YouTube and Twitter. So yep. X, X. So we got a, a Mega Pack video coming up in a while. Um, we're going to go uh, have a look, see what current production is looking like. Also, going to do a Tesla bot valuation reveal where we talk about how we uh, came up with our base case on Tesla bot value on Tesla bot al alone today. So when you take the, the, the future, va future value and discount it back to today, it's um, we have it as uh, 3415 a share. So 3,415 a share, and that's that's a base case. We layered in some conservatism here and there. We'll, we can get into that. And I think it's $11.9 trillion. Um, and that's just a Tesla bot alone. We felt it's appropriate, you know, after seeing what V12 could do, um, that the, the likelihood of Tesla bot being closer and uh, more useful more quickly, um, it, it warrants us putting it, it in our valuation. We don't think the market's going to agree with us for a very long time, if ever. Yeah. <laughs> when do so, they, right? They're not very logical. It is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, incredibly exciting. I'm really curious to see also just what they're doing at Mega, the Mega Factory in Lathrop, California. Uh, they have that second lot that's... Um, to the east of the factory to store extra, you know, mega packs. So uh, curious what they're doing there. They said on one of the earnings calls that they were limited by the number of batteries they ordered and the number of uh, power electronics, which is the inverters. So the inverters sit between the battery and whatever you're distributing the power. So in, in your Tesla car, you have an inverter that sits between the battery and the motor. And sometimes the motor uh, gives, gives energy back to the battery, but most often it's the <laughs> it pulling energy mm -hmm. uh, from the battery. Um, just incredibly excited about Tesla in general. Uh, yes, there may not be, I may not agree with everything. And sometimes we may point out various risks, but uh, we're still um, as bullish as ever. Um, anyhow, this is not investment advice. I am a financial advisor. Uh, rebellionaire.com is a brand of Halter Ferguson Financial and it's it's been good talking with you and, and thank you for sharing your your perspectives and uh, you know with all Tesla's doing with uh, referral credits and all that um, yeah I know you don't want to be pushy but there might be might be some some good uh, <laughs> maybe you can get some Tesla merch and and uh, I would love to go to the cyber truck reveal there you go. Yes. Cyber truck reveal. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's go. Oh, Anyhow, take care. Here with you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Bye for now.